Hi, Phil Crocker. How are you doing? Hi there. Hi there. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine, thanks. Yeah. Great. And you have played, actually, you've played in several senior things this year, haven't you? Because I know you played in um, the English Championships, the British Championships, and in the European Teams Championships in Dresden. So I want to first of all say congratulations because you were the joint winner of the British Over 50s Championship, weren't you, Phil? Uh, I was, yeah. Somewhat a surprise, but very, very nice to to do that, yeah. Yeah, together with uh, uh, Paul McWarney and, and Chris Duncan, yeah. Um, yeah, and how has it changed your life? Uh, <laughs> I'd love to say it's fundamentally changed my life, but no, it's it's it's, uh, it's fantastic to win it. It's a, it's a real surprise. And yeah, no, it's nice to achieve something like that every once in a while. Um, you know, may not happen again, but uh, I'll, yeah, I'll make it again. So, Pretty yeah. nice. Cool. And um, what about Dresden? Tell me, tell me a bit about uh, how you found Dresden. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I mean, Dresden was my first, the first time I've ever played actually in any kind of um, kind of team tournament that goes on over several days. I've played like in four NCL teams or club teams, but but not kind of a seven, ten day kind of thing like this. So it was quite interesting from that perspective. Um, and so for first time in a team tournament, first time in a seniors team tournament, and all of that abroad in Dresden, which uh, is, you know, a, a very nice city. Um, I'd been there, I think, for one night once a few years ago, um, but been there for, I think it was 10, 10 or so days, a good chance to, to look around, and it, it is a very nice place. So, um, yeah, to be we were lucky, weren't we, because we, we were in a very nice hotel as well. It was like, it was like really nice. We had good weather, um, staying in a nice hotel, and we had um, team walks, didn't we, each morning? We had... Um, yeah, well, part of, part of the training, I suppose, for the optimum performance and a little somewhat enjoyable as well. Yeah, go for a walk on on the river uh, into the town and so on. It's very nice. And and the weather was was uh, very nice indeed. Very sunny for the time of year. So, yeah, very lucky uh, to be able to do that. Yeah, excellent. OK, um, you can tell us a little bit more about chess tourism as we play the game, if you like. But uh, you've got a game to show us today. Yeah, so, well, uh, th th this was played for, I, I was playing in the England three team um, yes. together with um, Brian Valentine, who, who actually does all the grades and so on. Um, yeah. the UCF, he, he was our captain. And then Peter Hassan. He captained very well, didn't he? He, he, he did captain very well. I think it'd be um, great if he would do the captaining again <laughs> in future years. Yeah, no, no, he, he was, he was, you know, a, a real uh, pro at, at captaining. I, I mean, some might say that with only four players and four players to choose, um, yeah. Some of the more difficult choices <laughs> didn't need to be made, but you know he looked after us. He he was always there if there was a game running late and so on. So yeah, no, I think we had a, a decent yeah. team for it. And well, fact, I mean your team did extremely well, I think, because you tell me you won um you won an award, didn't so, you? Um, I mean, if you looked at the grades, you would have put us down as kind of no hopers, right? Which I think that the ranking list did. We were ranked something like twenty fourth out of thirty or so teams, um, but we actually finished in the end twelfth. Um, and that was even oh, after wow. losing yeah. in our final round. And um, we played one of the top teams, Berlin, in the final round. You didn't and finish ahead of England too, did you? No, no, no but it, it was a theoretical possibility in the final round yeah. that we might have done. Uh, if we'd beaten uh, Berlin, I think we might have done. But they had like mm -hmm. a GM and three IMs. Um, but our kind of bottom board, Ray Tarling, who's rated, I think, a little less than 1,800, was mm -hmm. almost beat the IM. Um, on bottom board, drew in the end, but very, very close to winning. So, yeah, it, it could have happened, but it, but it didn't quite. Not quite. Next time. Next time, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the game you're showing us today? Um, yeah. So, so, this is, I think, from game from round five. And I'm white and I'm playing um, the top board of um, Graz, which is, uh, I believe, a, a part, of, part of Austria. Um, mm. So my opponent is Fred Vigera, uh, Fido Master, and I am white. And we'll we'll start the move. So yes, D four. Um, standard. Did I you I did you do any prep for this game? I did do prep, and from what I remember, I, I think he had like two opening systems. He did one was the the kind of modern type system, which we'll see now. 
Um, and then he also did kind of a Ninja Indian um, kind, of, kind of thing. Um, so I think most of the, the prep I did, such as it was, I, I prepped for the uh, for the Nimzo type thing, or I probably would have played a Catalan. Um, but he actually went for this modern um, line. And in fact, he did a modern line. I don't think I'd seen him play it before. And I'm okay. not sure he had played it before because he spent quite a lot of time um, yeah. looking at the moves or thinking about the moves rather. So, I mean, I took him, first of all, first decision is to go for the sort of king pawn. Um, side oh, yeah. of thing, um, but I think he was probably going to do something like this anyway. So, so th this is all fairly standard, and he's playing a line where Black basically does very little to start with. Black kind of just waits on the second, third, and back rank, and says to White, "Okay, what are you going to do about it?" So you're um, doing the one fifty attack. Well, yeah, I mean, why not, right? And it, it, maybe it should be rebranded the over fifties. Uh, the over 50s attack i think we need to rebrand this opening yes to the over 50s attack it's true because we all play it don't we, we... Yeah, I mean, I mean, well i mean you know what, what else would you or is it especially with? effective against over 50s players well it didn't seem to do too badly um yeah. out of the opening although you know fred yeah. uh, came back quite strongly i was so. going to say for our younger viewers but i expect we won't have many younger viewers but for our younger viewers the 150 attack is after like the old the old brian would know all about this the old ecf grading system where grades were measured in um like one a scale from i don't know not up to about 200 and something and yeah. um and oh you you haven't done it exactly where you do well like, I, I, I kind of like three. i partially wimped out of the 150 so the yeah, 150 you just try and make them down the h file is basically I'm, the idea. I'm for a positional thing so the 150 yeah. in spirit would be something like this and then probably this kind of stuff and then i yeah. suppose if you really wanted to you might waste some moves over these kind of moves um yeah. but yeah the, the the intent would be just to checkmate black on the key it's just for checkmate and, isn't it yeah and, and black obviously would just castle into it all and, and it would all yeah yeah they, they just castle into it and you just make them that's basically um, but but actually by playing kind of this sort of move you, you get the impression that black's not looking to castle that quickly so i i, I kind of flip the moves over a little yeah, bit yeah. um and in fact he's doing what you might call this uh hippopotamus system okay and where you put the, the knights on d7 e7 and then given a bit of time he might even do something like this this bishop here I mean, he really doesn't put anything past the third rank at all yeah well i, I think that, that would be the pure hippo right i think yeah. sort of, what are you going to do about it and it is actually relatively hard to do anything because if, if white, white at some point probably needs to push a pawn and if white goes for like a d5 break then maybe black can play e5 and if white goes for e5, black might play d5. So it, it, it's not quite clear how you break through as white. Mm. Sometimes you can end up with the worst position. So I, I faced it a few times in blitz, um, but nothing really beyond that. Yeah. Um, anyway, we, we stick with the, the 150 attack yeah. for the moment because black might castle, right? You, you yeah. always possibility. Oh, well, now you can do it. You can go bishop h6 here. Well, yeah. And, and I think perhaps I should have do that. I, I mean, I did consider that, but I figured maybe if I do bishop h6, the black just does this, this, oh, and yeah. then sort of says, okay, what's your queen doing over there? And, yeah. and you might have to play queen g7 and possibly win this yeah. pawn, but I mean, how exciting yeah, is that? Yeah, you don't want to stop him castling, do you? Because then he's no. not going to castle into it. No, so I, I, I sort of just do a, a quiet little waiting move, h4, uh, <laughs> hoping for the castle. Uh, but, at, but at this point, he goes for h6, um, and... Um, so already White's, I mean, I mean, White could maybe develop the King's Bishop, but already White's almost forced into, into making a commitment. So I did actually castle. At this point, Black can now really start playing on the Queen side, maybe throw some yeah. Queen side pawns forward, um, which is um, what he started to do. Um, and if White plays h5, then Black can, can maybe just play g5 and keep the position blocked. Um, so I didn't do that straight away. Um, but as, as we'll see, I've got a cunning plan for playing h5, g5, and then um, playing a knight takes g5. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Ooh, this is exciting. Yeah. So instead, I just put the bishop on d3. So the one of the ideas of this is that if black plays b5, b4, hitting the knight as well he might, then the knight can go back to e2 and, and all yeah. the pieces yeah. sort of coordinate. I mean... 
it's maybe not the absolute best move because it does leave the D4 pawn maybe a little less protected. Mm. Um, anyway, that's what I did. And he goes for the B5. Um, so now I think I'll make my first attempt at sacrificing material. It okay. was quite keen not to accept any sacrifices, right? So I just play E5. Um, how, how old, roughly, do you know, is, was your opponent? Oh, how senior was he? He was probably, a little, you know, maybe... I'm going to guess he was maybe 10 years older than me. I don't, okay. Don't remember that. I Pretty damn senior then. Yeah. yeah. A little bit more more experienced, I think, is the phrase. More experienced. Yes, I'm getting the phrasing right. Yeah. I've got to get the phrasing right. Um. So, yeah, so if black kind of naively takes that pawn, um, then something like this might happen, and the game would have been over very, very quickly. I mean, black can't really open it up that quickly. Yeah. Is something it's a B5 tactic. Tactic, and this queen is unprotected. This king is in check, and very, very bad things are happening. Yeah. Um, so he didn't do that. No. He just instead played his bishop out, very sensible. But now I've got the e4 square for my knight. Um, so I put it there. He decides he doesn't want my knight um, living there for a while because I am threatening him to take twice on the six. So he takes, takes back. And then, as we said before, um, black can block up the position. Yeah. Um, and now black can move the knight round. And it's a, it's a little bit kind of annoying, right? Having the knight come into c4, hitting the queen, hitting the bishop, hitting yeah. b2. Um, I mean, you can see that this could go sort of badly wrong at some point. And, and in fact, it, I guess some of that happens later on. Um, but for the moment, um, black's really only attacking with the knight. So I've got time to push the pawn. Um, h pawn going. h pawn is going. And I mean, if black doesn't push the pawn to g5, then I can take on g6. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a nightmare then. Lots of pieces on, on the h6 pawn. So he's kind of forced to play g5. Um, and now we get the second attempt at, at sacrificing material. So we play knight takes uh, g5. Yeah. Uh, and is this sacrifice actually sound? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is sound. Excellent. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he didn't take it right. If he takes it, I think I'm doing really quite nicely, right? Would you, if you just take, throw h6 in at some point? I take bishop takes g5. Let's say he plays knight c4. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Play queen queen f4, and then pretty much regardless of what he does, um, I can push this pawn to h6. The bishop maybe has to go back to oh, yeah. um, f8, and, and then f6 maybe. And I've got bishop f6. I can maybe even just push this pawn all the way through to yeah. H8. Uh, it, it's pretty nasty. Or infiltrate with the queen. Um, maybe g5, g7, and so on. So it's, it, it's, it's not something he really wants to do. Um, yeah. So instead, he just plays knight c4. Um, I decide to take that. Takes back. So so now I'm a pawn up, which wasn't really the goal. The goal was to sacrifice a piece, but I'm a pawn up instead. <laughs> um, and it's slightly annoying, right? Because I could just move my knight back, and I do in another move move my knight back, but I don't really want to be wasting too many moves with my knight whilst my queen side's getting opened up. But anyway, I push forward. Okay. Black gets ready to bring the queen to the queen side. And now I do move the knight back because, I mean, the the main plan I could think of really was just to push the pawns forward or in, in some kind of order. And to do that, I need to move the, the knight back out of the way. Yeah. Okay, yeah. leaving yourself the possibility of making the bathtub shape. Uh, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Given half a chance, we will push the, the pawn here. I think this is the bathtub. Exactly it. so. So yeah, that, that's that's the grand plan. Um, but round about here, I start to go somewhat wrong. Um, so black's threatening the a two pawn, and obviously this B line's open. Um, so my king's in a little bit of pressure there. So I've got a choice, maybe three choices of what I do with my king. Um, I can push the pawn forward to a3, which is what I did. 
I could play King B1, which is perhaps the most natural move. Um, and as it turns out, the best move. Um, mm -hmm. or, I, or I could maybe kind of consider moving my king. I was thinking about that, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of three ways of doing it. I, I think I, I think the computer uh, told me I, I chose the absolutely the worst one. The worst one, okay. Um, so That's probably good. the best way of doing it is king b1. But it's kind of committal, right? The, the reason, one of the reasons why I didn't do it is, is you're really committing your king to either being on b1 or maybe going to a1, and then there's no real escape from it if black does get pressure on on these lines. Um, so probably I should have done something like this. Though. But I didn't. I went for the pawn to a3 option. Because I yeah. thought I would break through against on the king side quite quickly, right? So I thought it didn't mm -hmm. matter that much. But he played some pretty good moves now. So we do the bathtub. Yeah. And then a really nice move. He plays king d7. So he's moving his king out of Right. away from the king side yeah clever. might in some cases sort of move you know this kind of direction out of the way yeah. now he's already got one rook on this file he can potentially maneuver this bishop back and maybe sacrifice on a3 this knight can maybe really come in to these sort of squares it is kind of a little bit awkward and then the other little... yeah. Nice so, yeah 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 i'm a professional arrow, yeah. <laughs> arrow scorer. um so yeah, so what does white do about it? I mean, you don't really just want to be defending, although, I mean, maybe I should have done a little bit more on the defensive side, but I decided to go for trying to break through yeah. anyway. So this is the third attempt at trying to sacrifice material. Um, he didn't take it. If he did, then I would do something like this, um, and the rook breaks yeah. through here, or the pawn comes back here, and it becomes very, yeah. very good for white. So he, he doesn't take... Um, no, no. Take that back. He just carries on with his attack, and now from being somewhat better at the opening, it's probably sort of roughly level somewhere around here. Um, take on here, and then activate a rook. Good idea. He, he regroups the bishop, and then I can get a rook on the seventh. Not so much for having the rook on the seventh, but actually my main aim is to sacrifice it for this bishop to stop my getting checkmated with a bishop sacrifice on here. So that's the fourth of... attempt to sacrifice. Yeah, well, I do manage to get it in, this hmm. particular sacrifice. Um, so I'm trying to keep it solid um, on the queen side, but it's quite difficult to defend this square in particular. Um, and I could have done a better job of doing it anyway. So he, he's got quite easy attack now, right? Mm. One rook coming in. And my next move is 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 a mistake. Um, I, I thought it'd be sensible to have a rook defending the b2 pawn yeah. horizontally, kind of logical on, on one angle. Um, but apparently that is not the best way. I should have done something like a queen defending, rook over, and then maneuvered this knight Okay. Um, maybe something like this, this, and then put this knight on onto d1. So that, that would have been a, a much better defensive defensive plan. Yeah. But I didn't do that. Instead, I put the rook on on h2, and now he's he's getting. He, I mean, he is probably a bit better in, in this position. So I put my queen. Where, um, so I, I, at least I have plenty more time at this point. So I'm putting my queen, but it's attacking black's queen, so it's a little bit harder for black to take yeah. on. The so um, I'm trying to defend tactically, and given a chance, I'm going to try and infiltrate with my pieces um, on the king side. Um, and any kind of ending I get is going to be quite good because I've got. Oh, yeah, you're going to have this past H pawn, aren't you? Pawns um, going forward here. Yeah. So black moves the king out of the way, also freeing up the bishop to um, join the attack. So that's my cue to sacrifice. Um, the bishop has got to go. Bishop has got to go. So I'm, it's kind of, I've got a pawn um, and I've got these two pawns are incredibly strong if we ever get to an end game. But there is quite a bit of a danger of, of not reaching that end game um, with black's attack. 
So probably, again, I should have done a move like knight f2 and, and sort of regrouping over here, um, but I didn't. I instead um, wanted to make sure of that pawn first. Um, now my opponent starts hitting a pretty strong attack. And um, I decided to try and activate all my pieces. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't, to be honest, I hadn't even seen this next move, which is very strong. So my opponent was down to probably only a couple of minutes at this point. Right. Um, so what if you take it? I've got to take it. If I don't take it, then I think then it's... Okay, so take it. And, take it. and now c3 and it's nasty yeah um very nasty so i mean with best play black black should probably be winning this um but we don't see best play because my opponent had spent quite a lot of time on the previous moves and i had quite a bit of time to find a reasonable line so i'm not really interested in winning the pawn but i am mm. activating this yeah. knight and maybe coming in here trying to swap off a few um pieces yeah it's nice there isn't it because also it restricts that king yeah so black maneuvers the queen so that it's no longer under this indirect yeah so okay. now he's threatening what c takes b2 and if king takes then just queen takes queen and queen the pawn or something i know you still got that rook that rook is quite useful on h2 yeah yeah so it's just yeah. about holding together i think yeah. the, co the computer says is that instead of playing queen c4 which looks quite logical uh, queen a5 um, would actually have been winning. Um, okay. I don't think it's clear to a human that there's... Yeah, to try and allow for the check on e1, I suppose. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that kind of thing. I mean, I guess it's not exposed to being exchanged on c4. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So he didn't do that. did this instead. And now I just about have enough time to activate my pieces. So this, this is quite a nice move. Because it not only defends the back rank from a queen mm. check, but it's also threatening to come in here, Very good. maybe to f f7. Um, so we're combining defense and attack. Um, my opponent brings the rook forward, and now I can play this with a cunning plan. Um, if I get a free move, then rook f8 checkmate. That would be checkmate, and he, he did only have a, like a minute or so left, so yeah. he has to you never know. You never know. So he deals with the mate, um, but here I get an opportunity to um, remove one of his attacking pieces. Oh, that's good, yeah. Get rid of that. And now, now I'm now I'm doing okay, but it's still a little bit um, awkward, right? Um, mm. Because that pawn is is annoying. But I, I can offer a queen swap, as Keith Arkell would do. Yeah, if you can get an end game. <laughs> Um, and luckily, your bishop backward bishop move covering c1. Yeah, and and this move, um, I think there's various defensive moves, um, but this is quite nice because um, we activate the bishop and defending the, the pawn, and also these pawns are ready to run now. Mm. <coughs> Black takes the pawn, and at, at some level, it's a it's a mopping up exercise. At least if your computer is, is mopping up and it, it's mm. not difficult now because we've got an extra piece and in fact it's possible to give up the extra piece just to get an end game um without, oh. the, without the b2 pawn so you put the bishop in the way i mean i mean there are other ways of winning but now we're, we can take this pawn yeah. um, and just win with the, the other two pawns as pretty much this happens you get a check. And black can win that bishop. Um, but it really doesn't matter. You yeah. just liquidate to a one end game. And now the, the sort of sick move um, forcing the rook off is just to play rook f5. No way to keep the rook on the board. Oh, um, very good. Away. So yeah. yeah, takes the bishop, swap, swap. And then this pawn ending is winning. yeah you're in the square of his pawn and he's not in the square of yours so yeah the glancing might might not be that clear but uh, the square of this pawn goes hopefully i can draw a square yeah yeah you have 
we are in a square and this square here is um, some distance away from this king. Yes. So yeah, square the pawn and that was it. Congratulations, so, Phil. Win against an FM. Yeah. Very it was nice. an up and nice. game. Nice yeah. attacking game, loads of sacrificial attempts as well. Yeah. And even some of them executed. Yeah, some of them executed and it, it was quite a quite a lot of fun to play. So I enjoyed that one. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna wind up. Um one thing, what would you say to someone who is thinking about trying out seniors chess next year? Um well yeah, I, I would say um broadly give it a go. You you might think it's well um I mean, I mean, for the team tournaments, you might think, well, it's it's England. It must be you. Must, you need do you need to be a Grand Master or an IM or something to play? Um, and, he, and in fact, I, I think as long as you're a reasonably experienced club um, standard player, you could find a team um, to play in. And your opponents, yes, there are some really strong opponents you're playing against, um, but there are are also some you know slightly weaker teams. So I, I think it it is suitable for a broad range of senior players. Um, and I, and I think more generally for for senior tournaments, not necessarily the the, the team tournaments. Uh, my impression is it, it's a pretty good uh, community spirit there, and you get a chance to meet some a group of players that you'll you'll meet in in a number of tournaments, get to know them, um, um, and it brings a more social aspect to the to the game, which you know I certainly enjoy, and I think other people do. Brilliant. All right. Thanks very much, Phil. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.